Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Ian Davidson. In our show this time, Ian will be showcasing more of the stories our volunteer hosts are covering on the street. We'll learn about how the arts at Mark's Garage is partnering for the future. We'll get a glimpse at how people feel about the indictment of our now ex-chief of police, We'll find out how a 200-year-old Russian fort on the island of Kauai is playing a role in strengthening friendships. And we'll get a checkup at a Chinese pharmacist in downtown Honolulu. That's right, Jay. We have a great show to share. Hanging out, creating, and putting together these pieces with our volunteer hosts is so much fun. I'm super excited about this week's episode. So excited we should get right to it. Up first, Marsha and I met up with Lala at Arts at Mark's Garage to talk about how partnerships with the community are helping to foster a better future. Enjoy. Um, This is our community co-working space, um, kind of where we like to think that seeds are planted and (coughs) pollinated, um, a think tech area. Community can use it for meetings. We use it a lot for internal use as well. And then behind or in front of me here, is our probably newest and most popular feature um, is the Friends of the uh, Library Bookstore. So everything is donated, all the books, vinyls, um, literature, and resold at a very inexpensive, very um, reasonable price. And there's gems in here. Um, I see see one I want. There you go. Oh, good. (laughs) Already. Awesome. And what's been interesting is we started the bookstore and say for our our monthly first Fridays, the first month that we opened up, we had to kick the book people out. Like, all right guys, we gotta go in a place where, you know, it's uh, first Fridays have become known maybe for drinking and the nightlife to still have the art scene live and thriving in this space and then with the literature and to see that people are craving it on a Friday night, uh, you know, enjoying an exhibit or live music. They're, they're pulled right to the literature. So that was really neat to see that taking place. And our tr- foot traffic during the day has probably tripled since they've come in here. Um, so that's really neat to see more people just getting exposed to the space itself through literature and vice versa. Now, you mentioned partners. What are partners? So Arts at Mark's Garage is a nonprofit, and we thrive off of community support, um, grants, and um, diversified revenue streams. So one of those is um, our partnership um, uh, agreements and ability for them to pay a monthly agreement fee and have a contracted use of the space customized for their needs. So. Uh, whether it's travel to change, whether they're looking for a desk to be able to and to host events, to friends of the library that actually take up a portion of the space and sell books, to Improv Hawaii that needs workshop space and monthly show um, performance area, to the Shakespeare Festival. Um, it's a really diverse array of partnerships, which is really interesting to manage and work with, but a lot of resources as well. So that's um, another area of Arts at Mark's Garage and supporting um, space. I think that's one of the biggest needs for community in the arts and creative industries is we ask them what are the needs and one of the main things is they need space. So providing that kind of house and sacred haven for people to come and gather and be immersed in the arts is part of it. Um, The last part of kind of how we thrive here um, is through our um, packaging uh, of community events, private events. We're getting geared for the holidays, so why not have a holiday party um, in a beautiful gallery space? The money goes right back into the nonprofit community, so um, the dollar is stretched and doing good work to keep the neighborhood going and arts alive in the area. So can people... uh that are not partners, can they rent a space? Absolutely, so that's kind of the um, other leg of how we generate um, financial resources through the space is offering packages for um, film screenings or one night off performances or brand uh, launches, holiday parties. Um, uh, We've had some really interesting programs in here where like University of Hawaii came in and they rented the space and we had a Black Lives Matter um, speaker that came down. Um, had a 
you know, an hour and a half, really incredibly moving um, talk by this uh, leader in our community when it comes to human rights and equality, come all the way to Hawaii. And that we had like 300 people in the room. So there's so many ways to start utilizing space in different ways. Um, and for a nonprofit to be sustainable at the same time, I think more and more we need to look at diversifying our resource streams from a traditional sense of just grant writing or donations, but to broaden it and say, what is our product and our service that we provide and um, putting putting a number on it to facilitate the health and wellness of, of the long-term goals here. So do you have a lot of tourists? Do they come or local mm. people? Uh, what's your audience on a day-to-day -day basis? Day-to-day -day basis, I would say it's about 75-25%. Um, more and more visitors are curious about finding um, authentic places to come to outside of Waikiki, which is, you know, the sun and surf and the Mai Tais. It's beautiful. Who doesn't want to sit on Waikiki in front of the ocean um, and enjoy that? But they're also looking to explore a little bit further and deeper into what Hawaii really is and kind of having the local experience. So coming to local restaurants or the local boutique stores and the art gallery space provides a really unique experience which I think a lot of other cities are embellishing on. They're seeing the value of the creative industries for their travelers um, that are demanding it more and more. So I think that's only going to grow, um, especially with the um, expansion of Kaka'ako and more and more of the visitors having opportunity to come farther to this side of town. Um, partnerships with Travel to Change, which is an alternative travel company. Yeah, yeah, tell us about Travel to Change. Sure. Where, where is Travel to Change? Their desk is up in front. We can kind of walk over there. And so Travel to Change themselves is kind of an online platform travel agency for local community members, organizations, companies um, that want to provide an experience, whether it's yoga at sunset and a beach cleanup, or going to learn about an ancient Hawaiian fish pond, um, and then being able to do a hike up into the mountains to kayaking. The idea is that it, there's a service as well as um, an experience provided for um, the visitors that are seeking that. And again, that's kind of um, the long-term marketing trend is that the millennials the new travelers of the world are seeking that type of experience where they're going to a place and they're not only getting something but they're also giving back so Hawaii is abundant with that and these guys are, are trying to facilitate that so to have them as part of this this is another art form travel is an art form in many ways so being able to support that in creating physical space um, and having monthly events here um, showcasing the local artists which is supporting whether they're um, um, yoga practitioners or um, artists that want to provide an experience that's providing a platform for local economic stimulus as well. This is really, I'm excited Thank you. to watch the growth. Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm an honored and awed to be a part of it. I really think that we are in a time where um, this is only going to grow and embellish and become more and more valuable. head of the police department, uh, Honolulu Police Department, has been indicted on corruption and racketeering and uh, bank fraud and uh, obstruction of justice charges. It's a very sad. That's all I got it is to say sad, about isn't it? It's very sad. Um, maybe they need to vet them better. The police chief? Your yes. ex-police chief? You got any opinions about that? Uh, no, no, nope. No. I'm more concerned about the wife and her position in her office and the allegations against her. The, uh, as a trustee of minors and as a trustee in charge of a trust fund and, and the family drama and poss possibly uh, corrupted use of uh, her resources. So, yeah, I'm very concerned about that. It's alleged that um, four premier officers from the criminal investigative unit were drawn into this conspiracy to frame uh, the police the uh, chief's wife's uncle. How do you think that happens? How do you how do you how do you draw people in that have had a lifelong career in the police department to overtly break the law and participate? Well, uh, my experience from the Bible is this: money is the root of all evil. Isn't it the, the love, love? Isn't it the love of money the is love. the root of all evil? No, yeah, the love of money 
is the root of all evil. And so money is behind all the evilness that goes on under the sun. We are definitely living in interesting times. Let's hope for a better future. Next up, Lily Ong and I met in Kauai to see how Fort Elizabeth, a 200-year-old Russian fort, is paving the way to strengthen relationships between Russia and America. Thanks for watching ThinkTech. Good morning, sir. Could you tell us your name, please? My name is Dmitry Zhernov. I'm a minister counselor in the embassy of the Russian Federation, and I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to have a very important event, which should be, not, not, not even could be, but should be and will be conducive to strengthening of our relations. What, your hope, what, do, you, what do you hope to achieve from this trip? Well, for us, uh, the event is rather important. Uh, important because, uh, um, because of the initiatives of the Russians staying in the United States, especially the Congress of Russian Americans. Uh, they are trying to bring back and to show to a wider American public the long history of relations between our two countries. You can imagine that 200 years ago, Already, in various parts of the present United States, there were Russian settlements. It was in Alaska, it was in Fort Dross in California, and here in Hawaii. And uh, this is very interesting that uh, for 200 years, our countries, our countries and our people uh, did learn each other. Uh, these pages of history we must not forget, because our memory has to be preserved because you cannot build future without uh, deep knowledge of your past and uh, that's good that in the united states american people enthusiasts are trying to preserve the history as a whole yeah because the history of the united states is the history of a very complex uh, infiltration of cultures languages peoples and so on and so forth so and russians uh, were one of them you cannot imagine uh, american culture american history without the uh, influence of the uh, people coming from the russian federation um could you tell us what are some of the goals and aspirations you see from this event well i'm hoping that we can develop a stronger bond. I know we try to do a sister city uh, relationship kind of agreement because the connection here is the Russian fort and this is what 200th anniversary so I'm hoping we can develop some solid relationships and really connect culturally and understand the presence of the fort, um, Russian fort here on Kauai and what it means and it's about relationships right? Culture, exchanges, internships, I enjoy talking about that. And what are the steps to um, to um, growing a sister series relationship? What are the process to it? Right. So I we've been trying, and so we'll continue to try go through the right process. But I, I would like to connect back to whoever's the mayor there. I mean, whatever the leadership there, and begin the discussion from my office, working with a county council. There's a process, and so I think maybe from today we can actually see each other. Sometimes it's not about just emailing and the tech part of it, which is great. The relationship the eye-to-eye -eye contact so hopefully we can do that today and solidify some of the process that's going to take for us to finally do a sister city with Russia ปัญจานี้ดูสิอันนี้สิหัวนี้ดูเนี่ยฟีสิหัวอัคคะปัญจานี้ดูเนี่ยหัวอะไรไข่เพ่งอะโดไลเนสเนี่ยเนี่ย
<laughs> Why did you come to Hawaii? Oh, some China come and come, come and come. Yes, yeah, so everybody go out. Yeah, oh, run away from yeah, the yeah, from the yeah, yeah, yeah. My my father closed the store. Yeah, he kept the government. Yeah, and then go to Hong Kong, come over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only check up the dish. Yeah, I see the tongue, uh, and then see the body, <laughs> and then I, I put the med keep medicine. Yeah, different sick, different medicine. Yeah, just check up. Yeah, that's all. This is medicine, this kind, and this kind, yeah, yeah, all of, all of this kind, yeah. Yeah, this is only for back sore, yeah, to get back sore, yeah, <laughs> for this is back sore, yeah, this is back sore, yeah. Lake Soa, yeah. This is Lake Soa, yeah. This is, yeah. Oh, for for Lake Lake Soa, <laughs> yeah. All of different, all of different medicine, yeah. Different kind, yeah. All them all here too. Yeah, some this one. Yeah. All of for back back for Lake Soa, yeah. Arthritis. Arthritis. Yeah, for all of for arthritis. Yeah, this is medicine. All different. Too many different kinds, all different, yeah? <laughs> yeah, all different. Can you see in the... Yeah, different for cough, yeah? You lost it a million times. Yeah, this is for cough, yeah? For coughing. Yeah, for catch cold, cough, yeah, for catch cold, yeah, this is for catch cold, yeah? Yeah, this is for catch cold, yeah? This is small, small seed, slice. And he slices it. It's what? It's a small seed. And he slices it. Uh, it's, it's almost like a water chestnut kind of thing. And it's sliced and dehydrated. Yeah. Oh, this is a tree skin. A tree skin. In the tree, the tree. On the tree. Yeah, the long one. <laughs> long one. Cut, 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 all the different the seed. Oh here this one gets for sinus, yes? This is for sinus, yeah? Oh, for sinus. Oh here get to yeah? Outside. For sinus. For sinus. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, when you go stuck. Picnic, yeah, and then they stuck on you. When they're you go picnic the and they stuck on your clothes, uh, there was the smaller version of this. So, so it could be any herbs or anything that is uh, useful. Chinese has uh, like five thousand years of history of using all the herbs. So it's natural and no chemicals and less side effects or no yeah. side effects. Yeah. So, so tell me with with this um, medical. Yeah. A flower. That's a flower. That's a flower. Uh -huh. Clean up the poison. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Detox. Yeah. Detox. Detox. Uh -huh. Itchy for with tea doing. Yeah. This is pang. Yeah. This is pang pang. Yeah. Sometimes stung. Yeah. Or sometimes stung with uh, big powder. Yeah. Pang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or sometimes this is stung. Yeah. Stung. Yeah. Stung. Yeah. You put it here. Yeah. This is make powder, make small, huh? Ooh. Yeah, this is for teeth sore. Sore teeth. Sore tooth. Yeah. Sore tooth. Sore tooth. Sore This is for sore teeth. What does it taste like? Make tea drink. You make tea with it? Yeah, make tea, right? make tea drink. <laughs> no more taste. Don't eat it. That's stung, that's stung. That's stung, yeah? yeah make, tea. make tea drink, yeah? <laughs> yeah, oh, this one. Huh? This one. <laughs> The cups that you put on. That's all. You're That's it. Yeah, you're yeah. going to see the detox, and you're going to have a red mark for a few yeah, days. But that's the place where the, your poison of your body is going to come out through that. Uh, some small. Some small yeah. one. How they are, you're going to have a hickey on there. <laughs> yeah, up for otherwise, for pain. 
Wow. It's popping. Chinese medicine is all about balancing your body, uh, not, uh, yeah, between the so called hot and cold. <laughs> Somebody yeah. knee so I suck the knee. That is your morning. Somebody knee so I suck the knee. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I've spoken to Marcia since being cupped and chewing on rocks. I'm excited to report she's okay. Working with our volunteer hosts is good fun. If you're interested in being a host, want to share a story, or just want to know more about ThinkTech, head over to thinktechhawaii.com and feel free to contact us anytime. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash audio. And we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or, better yet, sign up for our email list and get our daily email advisory. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our programs, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during any of our live shows, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now here's this week's ThinkTech commentary. Aloha, my name is Ken Rogers. I am a Canadian, and as a graduate of an American university, I couldn't help but notice a provision in the Trump Tax Reform Act that increases the cost of a graduate education. Traditionally, when university students get tuition or waivers of tuition, they receive no cash and are not taxed on that tuition. I had a fellowship that paid 100% of my tuition at an elite American university. I would not have been able to go to any university had I been taxed on the value of that tuition. Those tax-free benefits represented a deeply ingrained American value supporting education. It created enormous goodwill for students like me and made the U.S. a beacon of learning for the whole world. Under the Trump bill, however, the value of those benefits would be taxed to the student who would have to raise the money to pay the tax on them. This would have a huge effect on graduate students, especially those who don't have money to spare and many won't be able to continue in school. 
It favors the wealthier students and would be terribly unfair. It also represents an anti-education attitude which has emerged in the United States, one very different from what I found here, different from what you would find today in Canada and many other countries where there are generous incentives for graduate study. Trump's Tax Reform Act is a tragic step backward and a blow against graduate education. It changes the United States from a land of opportunity to a land of opportunity only for the wealthy. It will prevent disadvantaged students from attending graduate school and will deprive them of upward mobility and the American dream. Is this what the new America is coming to? It's a far cry from my time and profoundly regrettable. Mahalo, I'm Ken Rogers from Canada. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. The Atherton Family Foundation, Castle and Cook, Hawaii. The Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. Collateral Analytics. The Cook Foundation. The Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners. Hawaii Energy. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, Hawaiian Electric Companies, the High Tech Development Corporation, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Integrated Security Technologies, Kamehameha Schools, Dwayne Carisu, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, the Volo. Okay, Ian, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Ian does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. And of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Ian Davidson. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.